Okay. All right, so it's uh, it's uh, Monday, December 6th at, um, I guess, technically 7 o'clock, and we'll officially get started. Um, really good to see everybody. Got a nice agenda for us to discuss. We've got in-person quorum and a few people joining us on Zoom. Um, so my question is, um, we've called to order. Do we have anybody that's interested for Citizens Forum? No. Okay. All right, so our next order of business, since there's no one here for Citizens Forum, is to uh, review or most likely approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was October 25th. Is there a discussion or do we have a motion to pass those minutes? I move to pass last meeting's minutes. All right, so it's been motioned by Ramesh and seconded by uh, Patrick. All in favor of approving those minutes? Yeah. So it's just the four that are present. So technically, okay. no other actions. That the ones on Zoom don't your vote doesn't count tonight, sorry. Okay, we, we love you, Aaron, <laughs> and we love you. It's <laughs> um, yeah. So technically, Ramesh, Kaylin, Todd, and Patrick, um, or an approval, so meeting, so those minutes are passed. So thank you for that. Um, our next item is receive an update, discuss presentation provided to city council. That already feels like it was like six months ago. Um, for the presentation. Thank you for everybody's. Thank you for everybody's help um, on that presentation. Um, Aaron, who's not with us now, she may be joining us. I'm not real sure, but. She was there. Um, I'm not sure if anybody watched it online. Did I get a chance to go back and watch it? Patrick, that's usually something you're great at. Um, so overall, the feedback that I got in the meeting and some feedback was um, super appreciative of the work that the board's done. Um, concise, as complicated as you know, all of the matter can be that it was uh, understandable. The, um, the uh, portfolios was a, was a great reminder of just like the action steps and the framework of what the boards work so hard at to get there. Um, and so um, you know, ultimately I, I got, you know, some kind of quick feedback that it was welcome. I don't know from your standpoint, Jared, you know, internally or anything you can share with us. Yeah, there were a couple questions from the guys, and uh, they they were around. Well, it's taking you this long to get this, these portfolios done. How long is it going to take to do all of these portfolios? And, and the the, the long-winded answer was basically, we don't know. It's, it's, it's each each session um, was research and discussion, and you know, and it, so they were. It was it was a good uh, delivery of basically that's how we get through the whole process we go through and. Uh, they understood, so they we didn't give any specific time frames that we must have you done by. So, um, but that was kind of their high level question that, that they asked in the meeting. Clarification, Jared. Uh, well, when a person more uh, did curiosity, or, or but it disappointed that we had not made as much progress. No, I, in fact, I think it's the reverse. I think they're pretty impressed with the amount of work that we've accomplished, um, and now they have something to chew on. Um, as far as recommendations go, um, and then they were curious, well, you know, what's the cadence? Because the, the question came from one of the newer members uh, of council, and they just didn't know is this something we're going to be coming to them every quarter with recommendations, and they need to be doing something with them. Um, so it's like we just talked about before. The takeaway for that, the council is now they've got these recommendations. Um, they need to have some discussions to, to determine what, what best to do with it. Um, from my perspective, some of the things I'll probably, for example, the um, uh, the consultant piece of it, I can start to get, go ahead and move forward with, because uh, the question will be how much, you know, what's it gonna cost, what's the budget related to that. Um, so I can start to kind of do that groundwork. Um, but yeah, at some point, the, the, uh, the council will come together and say, we're gonna do this, we agree that move forward with X, right? Um, that's, that'll be the next steps coming out of those recommendations. Might be a fifth Tuesday or something like that, one of those, one of those meetings. So I guess the big takeaway that you're talking about is that there there will be 
I'm using this word. I don't know if it's being used. It's almost like a ratification of those. Correct. Um, yeah, that's a good way to phrase it. Yeah. Uh, the, they obviously didn't have any discussion on it at, at the meeting, um, but the, the point of it was to then bring it back up at a, a later meeting where they can actually discuss it. So, like, you know, I discussed it with Mike. He was potentially at the Tuesday topic uh, just to ratify those, that's a good way to phrase it, uh, those recommendations. But I obviously, like the building, um, the building code recommendation that we're talking about. You know, there's going to be implications for costs and things like that. So there'll be some work on staff to, to do some of the due diligence. For example, I'll, I'll find out rough estimates on, you know, and try to identify some some firms that do that work and get some pricing so we can truly establish like a baseline that the city could at least have a marker. Yeah, yeah. and I'll be honest with you, the, the talking with Mindy with the the full board, you know, us providing the recommendations gave that that actually gave them some um, ideas on how they could present their information. So I think I, we've been a really good example uh, to the other board, but yeah, the other advisory board. So yeah, I that's kudos to you guys. So yeah, <clears throat> I felt I felt. Um... I felt really proud of the entire group, and for those that came before us that aren't that you know aren't represented on the board now, because so much work has been happening, as you know many of us here know. Um, yeah, I, I, I felt it was really well received, and from as like to your point, the question was out of like, wow, you know, this is a lot you guys to come back with. Mm -hmm. We expect this every time. I mean, it was you know like an anticipation question, which was which was good. And, um, you know, I said we were moving fast, but you know, ultimately that wasn't the goal. It was just we have a process, and we're going to work through that process. And if the process needs to change based on new members and changes, then we can, you know, we want to be a, uh, adaptable to that. Um, and new board will help help us do that. Any. Any other questions or comments that anybody has on that? So, uh, I understand that they would not um, give an opinion on uh, ask questions, right? So, uh, what what the questions discussed after uh, the presentation? Not specifically in that meeting, but they're going to. Uh, that, that's uh, that's one of the things that Mike will have a conversation. Getting into my conversation with council, mm -hmm. like, you know, everybody in agreement that those are good recommendations, and what should we do with those? And, and the, a lot of, I will say, um, the conversations from staff uh, on the education piece of it, they're doing a lot of those things already. So uh, it was in everybody was felt like the recommendations were in line with what we're doing, and uh, not I mean, it was a, that wouldn't be a big burden to anybody to do initial training or education related to this topic. Because uh, we do a lot of it today, so really everybody was on board with it from a staff perspective. Um, just like I said, the building one is going to be the, the interesting one because which which level do we want to to land on? Because obviously that will determine how much work needs to be done to mm -hmm. achieve that. I, I think that's really going to be the, the biggest conversation piece for the group to kind of wrestle with. I guess if we really talk about next steps, what you know, what the board and future board new members could expect. I mean, there's a couple of different things. One could be council or staff could come back and say, "Could you help us understand? Give us more right. information." That could be one. That could be one thing. Another one could be, "Hey, we got everything we need and moving forward." So thank you. Just almost like an acknowledgement of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, are there any other? See any other options that the board would need to know about? Not really. Uh, I don't. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I think most of it's going to move forward without a whole lot of you know, the the piece. Like I said, I think the piece that will will take the most discussion is going to be related to the level at which we want it to be to lay it at. Um, because from based on whatever that is, that will then determine the scope for all the facilities, right? So um, there'll be some legwork and groundwork that'll have to happen in. I mean, I'm sure it will start with a discussion around we agree that this needs to be the level. Now, staff go away and figure out what it's going to take to get there, come back with it, and then they'll make a decision on whether that's what will go forward with it or not, right? Or if it, we may look at it from a phased approach, they take 
10 years to get those buildings up to see, but we'll at least put a plan in place to get there, right? So all those things will have to be vetted out um, after they get to a for their comfortable. And I'm sure staff will probably make a recommendation. This is the perfect level. Um, and that discussion comes. Yeah, a follow up question. Um, as any of the other boards um, in their recommendation, so I, I, I see our recommendation as more as a qualitative recommendation rather than a quantitative one, mm -hmm. uh, where we didn't actually do a return on investment or NPV or, or anything of that sort. Are any other boards doing that? No, so really, the, so the so full board is considered advisory task board. Uh, we are the advisory board. They're more of a, they're supposed to be a task to go out and do uh, research and specifically address that with the, the presidential building piece. Um, so they're the rest of like so when you look at the other boards, library board, parks board, all those other boards. They're they're not in the same kind of capacity as what we're doing, and so they. When I think about the parks board, they actually are directly involved in. Determining, you know, make helping make decisions related to what's in the park, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there is actually there is funding that's associated to it. And then the park board agrees to, and all there's a whole CRDC and all the things related to that. A whole different process from us. So we're really this is it's really kind of a first for the city in the sense of an advisory board providing recommendations or advice uh, to, to be actionable. So. We kind of have blazed the trail. Ford is going to fall right behind us, mm -hmm. and then the rest of them really don't. don't. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 I think I, 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 I'm, I'm interpreting that as yeah. none of the boards are presenting concrete met, uh, financial analysis. Right. And the only reason I came up with that question is. Uh, the, the, the council has a tough job. Uh, they always have competing demand for a dollar. Uh, and any time, uh, if, if one committee is actually telling, hey, for $10 spent, you're going to get $20 back, that's going to be more attractive than just qualitative. Uh, so that, so the, the, the quantitative piece typically comes from staff, right? So okay. staff really will end up doing the work okay. related to that. And, and because we'll identify, you know, the resources that are involved, whether that's financial resources or staff or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll come down to what we present. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, depending on what it is, they'll present options. Mm -hmm. um, you know, return on investment may be low, but it, it will get higher quality goods or services. You know, or do we drop here? Then we lose this level, and, but it's less expensive. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, it's, those are the types of presentations that staff will present to council. Right. On various things. I mean, it, it, even yeah. for the far out strategic stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, for example, the consultant piece, I, my, my takeaway is that I will be preparing to identify what type of budget we would need to take forward in the next fiscal year mm -hmm. for council to award uh, or approve the budget. That makes sense. Best again, I, I think that's a really, really good question. And, you know, it reminds me going back to some very, very early meetings, you know, when we were, and, and we still do this to this day, like determining right glasses to look through. Are we looking through kind of today, next week, next month? Because, you know, so many of us, are, that's what we do in our everyday jobs, mm -hmm. you know, and then that, like, that future thought process. Um, um, and I think it's a great question because it's so easy for us to, to constantly be thinking what's an ROI and should we be attaching a spreadsheet that kind of does a 20-year cost analysis based on, um, I, I know there's many of us that think that way. Mm -hmm. and, and Jerry, you're right. I mean, it's just, you know, helping us, helping the board and future boards understand the same focus on that goal. Right. Um, and then, you know, those assignments. I mean, we can provide it when it's needed. But right. And again, I just think it's a really, really good point that we even struggled with, you know, as we're trying to come up with the guardrails for this. For sure. Patrick, do you have any thoughts? Or? Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry. I'm glad I don't know. Thank you for representing us. Oh, absolutely. It was easy. 
yeah, it was easy because we got such a great group. So a lot of great work was done. Okay, let's. Um, our next item uh, technically is receive an, an overview and discuss the finding and recommendation for the robotic workforce and automated city service portfolio. In Galen, this was uh, a portfolio of you and um, Aaron, E R I N, not A R. Um, so you're here. How are you looking for? Thank you. Uh, so I was the uh, Go through kind of, I guess, the process that I went through and the research I pulled. Certainly, we can talk about well, I, our current cadence means this is just the first conversation. Exactly. So, that is what this is. <laughs> um, I couldn't tell myself actually writing a couple of recommendations since I won't be here in the next year. Um, so, I, I did put a couple in there, but mostly I just presented some research. So the first slide is just to reiterate what this pillar, how it was described in the document from like the first city council meeting. So this is to, the idea of the pillar, the way it was worded is to optimize what's going to happen from a robotics and automation reality like taking kind of the way it's worded, like taking advantage of what's going to happen. And then the bullets that they had originally, that you all had originally documented were around kind of more like putting a process in place, putting a structure in place to take advantage of those things. So like the second one there, um, setting up a technology interface standards, thinking about a UX for, um, for residents, who are going to be engaging with these automated city services. And the next bullet that said again, kind of about that. And then it talks about creating an inventory of processes uh, to help determine what we need, the requirements. It talks in the last bullet about the citizen engagement platform and innovation hub, which were two things I was really excited about when I first joined the board. But um, so far, the way we've been doing some of our pillars, we haven't talked a lot about those things, but for this particular pillar, um, I do think it's probably, you know, worth having that in the top of your mind as I kind of go through the research that I found related to. So what I did, I read all of this, but then I just did a Google search around um, robotics and cities and automated city services, just what's going on out there, kind of more of a broad brush. And so every one of these slides in the notes has the article or link or whatever where I got the information. Um, can, is it okay if we minimize those pictures of the people's faces so I can see the text? Just like that little. Julian's um, down the booth. Oh. So, you, Julian, did you hear that? The camera, Julian, the pictures of all of us, or move it maybe to the bottom right? Uh, if that can be done. Um, Hold on a second. It's on the computer okay. up there. I have to change it. Oh, okay. Hold on. It's not okay. It's okay. I can do it. Um, okay. So this quote here is talking about um, chat assistants are already common today, but eventually cities will have these brains that are pretty much running everything from the back end. Um, a lot of course automation, a lot more analysis. We talked a lot about data. So the idea here from this particular, and let me just get my PowerPoint up so I can tell you who I have it. So this is from Deloitte, a study from Deloitte about the future of cities. And what I liked about it is they had recommendations here that I thought we touched on a lot of these things. So I went ahead and copied their recommendations. Um, but the like number six and seven, I thought were particularly interesting for talking about robotic workforce and automated city services is just making sure that the city has the right skill set to to do that, um, as well as in this particular instance, and in others too, but making sure that as we go forward, we find a way to get the residents to talk to us about what they want out of automated city services, what their experience, where they would like to see potentially robotic and where they implement and those types of things. So, uh, but I, again, I just I put this up here because it echoes so much of what we had had talked about with most of the pillars. 
On the next slide, it gets into very specific quotes about robot, robotic workforce. And so this is a quote talking about FedEx, you know, um, with the robot delivering pizzas and PepsiCo, talking about restructuring, so company layoffs. Um, the next one is talking about, again, impact to workforce. The third one is talking about the states that are most um, likely to be impacted by a shift in automated systems. So what our pillar was about is like the city services, which makes total sense. But what my research, what I found in almost every article that came up was talking about cities, um, I mean, at the end of the day, losing income because their residents are falling behind in this shift to robotic workforce and automated services. So not just for the city, but the people who live here and pay our bills, they're going to be struggling potentially um, to, to keep up with this. So I'll get to kind of what I, I think might be worth considering in that regard. But again, like I was doing the research about the actual services themselves and almost every article was really talking about residents um, and jobs and things like that and, and kind of how to shift skill sets and um, other residents. So as clarification, you're making the point to say, uh, if we thought of Coggle as a bird, if the Coggle had more automation, it could lead to job displacement of residents? Or you're saying when automation happens across U.S., Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was like when I was trying to put that information about the city itself becoming smarter and more automated, all of the data that I was finding, most of it, was really more about cities struggling because their residents can't find jobs or they move mm -hmm. to go find a job somewhere else because the industries of that city are going to be impacted by this. So, um, and so in the next slide, it, that's where it started. Some of the research came. So there's a whole PDF that's long, although I did read it and I thought it was pretty fascinating. Um, and then so what this particular article is talking about is what cities can do now to start helping either diversify the industries that are within their city and or helping their residents gain skills, get exposure to, like, how to make your city a good place for the future where there is going to be huge shift in work towards automation and, and robots. Um, so it comes kind of comes out of from both the residents and, like, attracting the right industries or um, really, like, that diversification of industries for the city. So, again, I, I put the research in there. And you can go look through it, which I would recommend. Um, on the next slide, it's just a map of it's like robots per person across the, you know, I guess mostly south part of the country. Um, and you can see Dallas is red here. And I can't remember what the dates were on this, but the general point was like, we do live in a hot spot, so all whatever trains are coming, we're going to be in the middle of it. So we definitely need to prepare because we'll be on that leading edge of everything that's coming. Was kind of my takeaway from this, just like some of the other. And this this could potentially be utilized to understand other cities who may be in a similar place to us, so we could learn from or um, you know potentially engage with or something. But it, again, this is more about robots. Um, than it is about automated city services. And just for just for clarification or asking dumb question, making that distinction between robotics and AI and learning, mm -hmm. um, the robotics is, is that more straight up manufacturing the way some people may think. Um, what when you're going through the research, yep. I guess what, yep. what the distinction was there is in it? So, so it's easy to say. So at first I started doing research just on robotics. Um, so there does seem to be a distinction. I will say when I then started looking at the automation, to me the big difference, it's not just manufacturing that I saw. It's a lot of delivery stuff. So you'll see when I get to my recommendations, but 
I think from a city perspective, my takeaway was like, it'll impact jobs for the people living in your city. So robotic workforces in manufacturing and other areas will have an impact on your residents. But then in terms of like conveniences and services and things, the city will have a population of robot workers right. by 2040. And there will be right. another class of citizens roaming around. And so and it, it was like in all sorts of things. So, I mean, it could be a, the grocery store or like delivering pizzas or yeah. lawn mowing. I don't know. You know, it, it was all sorts of things that came up. But the general takeaway was just like the assumption is there will be a new class. New citizens. Right roaming around, so <laughs> kind of prepare for that. Now, regarding the automation, it was more about like analytics and data and like just the idea that the everything the city does, it's like we've been talking a lot about, and, and those first few recommendations um, echoed it about privacy and things like that, but the stuff I was reading about like 2040, kind of because the 2040 idea is, of other cities are doing the same idea. Um, it was my takeaway was like it's coming, and um, there wasn't like a aha, like no surprise. It was just like in, like everything's going to be automated. It's going to be a computer running everything pretty much, and like we're all going to be doing different things than we are today. We're going to be involved. We're going to be doing a lot, I'm sure, but it's not going to be making basic decisions and managing the city the way that we are now. But from, and I'm trying, I, I put, and there's an article in there, I didn't do as much on the analytics side of it, the automation, because that one to me seemed like we're kind of already there. It, you know, I'm sure it will change, but that one didn't seem as much of a shift to me as um, the job impact to our residents and the robots that will be roaming around our city. <clears throat> I appreciate it. I mean, just, you know, even in our color and the use of the word robotic, you know, just kind of calls out a, a vision, mm -hmm. you know, um, in your head. Whatever you look at. So, yeah. I was just wondering what so like driverless vehicles. I mean, we're in the, in the robotic yeah. workforce. So it's not, it's not just um, human, humanoid type thing. Um, so for me, the taking what the board had already kind of said as like our aim for this pillar, which was to go with the flow pretty much. This is happening. Get ready. Take advantage of what's going to be coming from a data and automation and robotic perspective. And then kind of to layer in what I learned, which is smart cities should be thinking about how this is going to impact their residents as well um, and should decide if they want to try to influence that or not. Um, so on the last slide, I just had like three areas of consideration. Um, and the first one, I was looking at the city department. Obviously, we have the Enterprise Solutions Department. It had IT in there. I would propose that to to look into the U.S. and the citizen engagement platform and um, the general idea of analyzing all this data, preparing a data warehouse, or finding that you're, uh, our consultant that we're recommending to help us identify like a platform or services, I propose at some point in the next five years, I would say, like bringing on a team, a person, something, an expert within that department to really lead those efforts. Um, because there's so, I mean, there's so much to be done, and I can't imagine like a volunteer group each year, like ha having to suggest that we get a consultant to then tell us. It's like I think it would make sense that we have like a counterpart in the city, like focus on the automation and analytics piece of it, the data, like yeah, like a data scientist, or at least something along those lines. Um, so that, that was just from the, that's like, to me, that first bullet is like everything the current, the current pillar said, I think we need to hire someone who works for the city to keep that going consistently all the time. Um, 
And then my second takeaway, like I already mentioned, was just to prepare the city for robot workers. Now, my research did not get into the details of what that would look like. Like, what would it look like to prepare for the automated vehicles? I'm sure there's tons of stuff out there about that. Um, and the other various non-humans who will be doing things in our city. Uh, but I just said something along the lines of having the city think about any investments they're making that are like 15-year investments or longer, we should start now making sure that those plans are accounting for non-human workers, whether it's, I mean, I guess maybe to a similar way that we think about like disabilities or something like that, like build it into the city planning of having more, yeah, like people not being involved in a lot more things. Almost like, are, are you, well, I don't want to assume you're saying this, but let me say it this way. Um, one of the things I'm thinking about when you say that is when you look at almost like the HR portion of any business, you know, talk about <clears throat> the city, you know, a part of that planning moving forward is, you know, resources and headcount and responsibilities and how do we track KPIs and what, what you know, success looks like. There, there is going to be a delivery mechanism that may or may not be Karen's responsibility mm -hmm. or another city employees. Mm -hmm. It could be also delivery service or uh, handled in a different way mm -hmm. that may not take a human touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things you're talking yes. about. Is that a good way to yeah. possibly think about it? I mean, yes, for sure. I think also, like from an infrastructure perspective, um, what would it look like to design an intersection or a crosswalk or sidewalk or, I don't know, let's, the things that the city's building today that they're not going to refresh till 2045, what of those things do they need to plan in advance to have? potentially non-human things driving on it, riding on it, walking on it, whatever it may be. Everything I read indicated like true sci-fi, like 2040 is not going to be uh, I was humanoid. Right, right. <laughs> I was tricking. Yeah. So like I just don't know like what in the city and planning, I mean building, are, are we going to have robots cleaning the buildings? instead of a cleaning crew. If we are, does that, I mean, I don't know. Does that mean we install, I, I didn't get into like the well, detail of the, yeah. And off and were, yeah. You know, and for example, I mean, that was easy one to talk about because, you know, they're beta software for full self-driving. I mean, you might have to tell them that's going to be full self-driving in a very short amount of time, you know. Um, so having a right turn lane that didn't up in Sandy Lake is a big step for traffic, but, doesn't really direct you. Sure. There's a whole different yeah. set of, you know, yeah. thought process as yep. to what are we going to do with 10 cars that are driving by themselves yeah. from a police standpoint, from a fire standpoint, from a... Yeah, and I don't know. So, I, I, I you know, uh, when we think about um, robotization, I, uh, to me, uh, I see two categories. One where uh, an actual person has to or actual uh, uh, equipment has to be there, like trash pickup. Uh, versus today, uh, we had the water meter uh, to turn from manual to now someone has to drive close by. And I think by 2040, everything will be wireless. So, but it'll still be a robot program sitting in, in uh, Jack's office that's mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 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 capturing the data. But uh, I 100% get what you're saying. For example, if that trip pickup is going to be, uh, it's going to be a robot that's doing it. Uh, do we need to have sensors on the back alleys that uh, the robots can easily navigate if something is there? Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be as simple as a wire that you install along with the city cable. Yeah. That's a great example of like, yes. Yeah, like, what are the things again? Not that we know today, mm -hmm. but as you're as the city's making decisions that have a 15 year lifespan have one of their variables be, would we do anything different if we were assuming a robot was going to be involved? So, for example, a real practical way is like you're sitting in a budget meeting and you can say, why would we hire an FTE at an $85,000 salary with tax benefits? We can take that $100,000 and apply this type of infrastructure that can impact the whole city. Like, yeah. that to me... 
Yeah. Probably a very realistic way that this is going to make an impact. Yeah. Definitely. And, and along those lines, uh, in 2040, the portion of city budget spent on IT is going to be a lot bigger mm -hmm. than it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another random thought, you, you, you're talking about having a data scientist. Uh, I think a um, little more basic. Where, uh, today, every problem that we're trying to solve, we keep saying, I wish we had more data, uh, historical data on this. So if, if we start capturing the data today, uh, 20 years down the road, that becomes the uh, foundation that you can build on. So we, we don't know what AI tools we will have, but but um, I think in the beginning of, uh, sessions we heard that we don't capture or don't save a lot of the data. Uh, so whatever we can do in the next two three years to just make sure we're getting yes, the data we can. Yes, and even if it's a cheaper form of storage, mm -hmm. uh, capture it and put it in the cheapest form of storage. That, could, that should be a long-term vision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, and then the final thing, this was the one that I guess kind of surprised me, mainly because it wasn't in the original bullet, but like I said, it just kept coming up, kept coming up, is I recommend potentially doing an analysis, speaking of data. These, I, in the article I shared, you can see they, you can estimate the percentage of your the jobs in your city for your residents, how much of them have a likelihood to be replaced mm -hmm. by an automated process or robot. So like Minneapolis is like 40% of jobs, um, which actually is a low risk. So they have, they're at a low risk for impact from what's gonna happen with regards to automation and robots, with 40% of their jobs being likely to get replaced up for their residents. So anyway, what I think would be potentially good again in the next five years to understand how big of a risk is this for Coppell is like in terms of the industries and residents who live here, are is is our city diversified enough that we think it's gonna stay healthy from an economic perspective? Will people continue to be able to find work? Are they in the industries that we think will survive? Or do they have the skill sets that they need? Um, in terms of the businesses we want to bring into the city, do we feel like those businesses are going to die out in 10 years because they're going to get replaced by these services and we're having new buildings every, you know, like, I think to recommend to the city um, to start thinking about the impact of jobs. Yes, again, the data I found, it wasn't like job loss. It was really a shift of work to these industries that are more conducive to data and analytics and automation. Um, and so I think, and then the, the final little piece is, does Coppell have an interest, and some cities are doing this, in providing like an upskilling, like in addition to all the other education we're doing for the other pillars, do we want to be a city that is like, um, I was going to say breeding, but that's it. Almost like a right. Yeah, like that you're helping our residents be the ones to get these jobs, to stay in these industries, um, so that we can be a city full of residents in healthy industries. If we're not already, which I don't know. But I didn't pull the data for but One of the thoughts I have about kind of bullet point number three, is we've talked about, you know, jobs and citizens, you know, if we, if we maybe take a step back from that and just look at it, just look at it from an income statement standpoint for the city, right? From monetization, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> I think we definitely need to, I think one of the things we should look at is like, how is that going to impact, you know, you, me, and all of our neighbors within the city? I think also the picture of that is even one of the monetization strategies, and are we prepared for what mm -hmm. that is? I mean, I mean, the city's always already dealing with, you know, you know, whether it's a legal or a political discussion about how, you know, sales tax revenue, this, that, and the other. You know, there's going to be different ways things are monetized. You know, which is kind of insane, but, um, but I think it probably plays into this in a big way as well. Uh, one one point about uh, the risk of um, people losing jobs. Uh, I would say one counterpoint would be if we made the city very livable and, and, and uh, likable, uh, so sure, some residents will lose 
jobs and how to move out. But if the city is good by itself, there will be other people that want to move in. Uh, so uh, Oklahoma is an example where uh, all the people uh, graduating are leaving. So, so Tulsa is giving $10,000, $20,000 just to, to move and, and work virtually from there. Um, and, and people moving out of Oklahoma are coming to Dallas. So as long as uh, Caucus is a good city, uh, other departments, if they're making it good, then that might negate the problem. Uh, but there's a risk. Uh, with uh, internet globalization, manufacturing jobs went away. With artificial intelligence and robotics, even white collar mm -hmm. jobs and service jobs are at risk. So, yeah, I mean, every indication I just got was just that the work would change, and um, like they just talk about like low income workers are at like these like the service jobs, like the they they have of data about the salaries, and they gave examples of jobs and like certain things that your residents are particularly. I am just gonna yeah, or those of the businesses in your city, they kind of said, these are the ones that are most at risk, like to what you just said. Really so it's like an assessment yeah. of like how at risk is So maybe we're not, and then we can tell the city, hey, you don't really need to worry about this aspect of what's coming. I think, I think it's fascinating, Adeline, uh, because whoever built that model took uh, several factors into consideration. So in a standardized uh, template, it would be interesting to plug Coppell in mm -hmm. to see are we at the 40% good category or are we at the 80% bad category? Yeah. And then the leaders will have to. Yeah. Or even better. I think could be even better. So. Um, I think we have a pretty high bachelor's and master's degree in Cocktail, mm -hmm. so that might be beneficial for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, I based on what I know of our resident base today mm -hmm. and the issues we have staffing the warehouse district, because um, those folks, the issue we have is transportation because they're coming from everywhere else. So, yeah. so it's not necessarily our residents that are working. There are some, like I said, yeah. we don't have any, but the majority are coming from outside cities to go work in the warehouse side. Yeah. Um, I eat darts and right. everything else. We are pretty much a professional base. Um, I mean, yeah. most most everybody to your point has a high level of education, um, this, and also because our school district here is produces you know, scores very high in education, professionals and folks that are in that category are looking for their, their children to also continue on that path. So, yeah. pace of change is I, what is is to me. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but it's just how I'm thinking. I mean, the, the pace of this change to me is one of the major risk factors uh, because typically we don't move as fast as other industries just because of government and all that. This pace of change is, think about Moore's Law. I mean, double in every two years. I mean, that's an excellent point. I mean, uh, we just have to be the slowest um, person running, right? If the break point is faster than us, we are losing the break point. So we could be losing to our neighbors if we are slow. Yeah, that pace of change to me is just like, I don't know how you factor that in, but it's just something I'm thinking about because, I mean, again, we're going to have Teslas roaming the streets, you know, earning money for people who own Teslas like an Uber within the next six to 13 months. You mean? Well, well yeah. I mean, it's just going to... I think about it a lot of ways. I think, I think when you look at public thinking, there's a right. lot, and there's some, some... You look at a police situation, and you have a human with a weapon um, that has emotions, and when someone's shooting at them, they don't necessarily think through all of them, their training. Yeah, hopefully they react because they do pretty well. But you take that and change that into a, some, to a, a robot, um, they aren't going to react emotionally. They are going to respond in a very audible way. And they won't potentially right. die if they get shot, so they don't have to right. protect their life in right. the way, you know? So I think those, those yeah. types of things are going to change. I look at uh, fire safety. They've, they've got drones that uh, can carry hoses now and put out fires, um, and those are all programmed. They can get from the firehouse, they push a button, and they go. <laughs> and it can happen. It's just, right. I think those things are changing, 
So the workforce around those those two particular areas, I think, will be a lot different than what we see today. Yeah. Um, and then they need to build a firehouse to right. maintain the, the drones instead. Yeah. <laughs> so it needs to be a skill set. Yeah. But the, there's still going to be, I mean, there, there will always be the, the, the medical side of that. Mm -hmm. And there's still, I mean, as much robotic stuff as is out there already, yeah. uh, we still need, people still want people yeah. to yeah. talk to you and work on them. There will still be that balance. I think that has to happen. <clears throat> Circling back to that pace of change, and to your point, Caitlin, or Caitlin, on having an individual or a, a team of people. I mean, to me, this this impact of this portfolio around AI, robotics, or even if it's renamed, almost just like automation, mm -hmm. whatever that is. To me, it's not. It, it's not even the department, it's, it is <clears throat> infiltrated. That's the wrong way to say it. Um, it's ingrained in every department. And We're talking about robots infiltrating. It's not, <laughs> a, it, you know, I mean, that's all that we don't need to get into. Okay. But um, to me, it's not like a department. It's a, it is like it's culture a, and leadership. It's an evolution of all these professions. It has to impact mm -hmm. like every department we have. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I really think it, it, it I mean, Basically, your research it is going. It's here, right? Yeah. I mean, we've agreed in the pillars that it's coming. Yeah. Uh, we just do our best to, to look to take advantage of it. And I, and I think we're. I think you're in a fortunate city where we have, you know, directors that are thinking at this level. Mm -hmm. um, we already have the robot um, that paints the lines for us out on the soccer field. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was at the conference. They've got, to your point, lawnmowers, right? Mm -hmm. That are fully robotic. Uh, so instead of the little vacuums that run around a clean floor, it's the it's they're mowing the yard. So I think all of those things will become well, they're already here. So yeah. to your point, it's the infrastructure, it's the things that we need to be thinking about long long range to try to help prepare for that. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, like the one thing that I didn't find data to back this up, but this is what I was thinking with the way, like the self-driving cars, and I've, I've read a lot about like car sharing. Is this in the future, we won't be driving, we won't need to have our own cars, probably, at least not as many people. So it could be that the city can actually start to think about diverting funds from certain things they're investing in today. Because if, if they, you know, if they're thinking 20 years in advance, and in 20 years, the estimate is one car per household instead of 2.2 or whatever. They cannot do X, Y, Z investment in the city infrastructure for roads or whatever it may be. They just need to start thinking, what are we going to need in 25 years? And it's robots well, doing everything. And, and Mike said this a long time ago, and we mentioned it in here before, as like all of those sub air airplanes today. We're, we're basically still riding at an airplane that was designed in the, you know, whatever occurred. And it's, that model will change. And when we no longer need three miles of runway and we're going vertical, we don't have the same restrictions on, on buildings uh, in Capo mm -hmm. that we have today. Yeah. And so all that potentially can change. And when that does, um, <laughs> Um, I think we hit that top, maybe we'll yeah, get it there um, in the top right, that little view, yeah. and then one yeah, of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a different one. There's Aaron. Yeah. Um, do you lose my show? At least on camera, I think. Yeah. Oops, there you go. Yeah, anyway, I think all those things can, are, are realistic. Uh, they are coming. I, I am less concerned about the resident mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, just from my, first, that's just a personal opinion. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, I mean there's, there's a chance of, um, but I think those are the things that, that will, the biggest impact that I see related to this would be some of the changes that happen regionally that impact development here. Mm -hmm. um, I think city services will continue to automate. We're already looking at, you know, automation across the board. Yep. Um, 
but again, there's a balance. There's a, there's a, there's a service level that we have to maintain. Uh, and when you, when you go robotic, you lose some of the human element. Yeah. And what people like about communities in general is the kind of the human interaction piece. And that's what we've been trying to focus on is the allies mm -hmm. of the community and mm -hmm. getting people together and creating gathering spaces and, and all those things. Um, when you start to take that away, there's got to be some, something that backs those up. So, um, so the, to your point, city staff may no longer do tasks, but they may be more involved doing other things. The planning for planning the future yeah. of a, a gathering. Right. And I mean, I get like from what I was thinking, it was more like um, new services and more of like the service industry versus like the jobs in the city. I, I wasn't, I didn't read anything that was like city, like the city, it, I'm like, I'm suggesting we hire more people to help right. with this problem. Right. <laughs> no problem, it's this opportunity, you know? So like everything I read was like, there's going to be a lot more to do because everything's going to get more complex. As it gets smarter, it will get more complex. It will be more efficient, but it won't be as simple. Michelle and Aaron, we haven't been able to see you on screen, but definitely want to make sure you guys have opportunities to speak in or, or ask. I don't know if you have any thoughts, but I'll make sure you guys know we still know you're there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think most of my ideas, Jared touched on one as far as the workforce. I think there's a empty capacity in the workforce today that automation could could pick up. I know there's a a struggle to hire um, entry level positions that will one day be replaced uh, with automation or robotics. Uh, the other thing I really like about bringing something into the fifth to the purchase orders and with a 15 year lifespan so that there's an intentional act of what are we doing? What's this gonna look like? once it expires because we will be in that new area um, and that can go way beyond our scope but if we have grown fire hydrants what does that mean for our setbacks on our on our sidewalks and you know all those sort of things snowball so in as a recommendation implementing that step i think could go a long way in continuing to um, push that mindset throughout the city because it won't be one person. It does have to be adopted across the board. And so those were my comments from from what you guys have been saying. Um, I wanna add a few things here. Um, about as far as the workforce goes, um, yeah, there will, there will be a shift in workforce. I, I'm thinking more of, you know, this the people, the staff skill set will change a lot. So you will, you will need more workforce for your robotics, what have you, but you know, the skill set will look a lot different. That's something we have to, I uh, think that can be part of the recommendation. What would be the skill sets required for the staff for uh, the workforce uh, as far as the city workforce goes. Um, and the, the idea of drones, is, it's actually great. I've seen like a lot of this, um, the implementation I was watching a video a few days ago. Um, you know, there's a lot of use cases for drones when it comes to um, emergency management systems. So I think uh, that would be one of the biggest thing as part of the uh, city of Coppel's uh, future planning, usage of drones for different things. Patrick, do you have any thoughts on recommendations? So, you know, one of it kind of the circle background match to what we were talking about earlier, one of the things that I'm sitting here kind of struggling with to be open is looking at 2040, I mean, who knows? I mean, it could be so crazy different than we can even dream. Um, I'm trying to make a recommendation around that seems easy and really hard, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really easy. Let's go do more research. We need more people to figure it out for us. Um, so much of my thoughts is like, what needs to happen like immediately? Because <laughs> it's already here. 
and I, I keep thinking back about what our true purpose is and what are the recommendations that we can make that are going to make us prepared for 2040 and beyond, even though some of this 2040 stuff is already hitting us yesterday. Right. Does it make sense what I'm trying to say? There's a dichotomy that we're working with in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on, on the topic, um, uh, Todd, so 2040 seems like a long way off, but only 19 years away. Okay. All of us, God willing, will still be alive and probably more rigid to change. Uh, so there will be our generation that will be not wanting way too much automation. And then there will be younger generation that will want. So there will be that uh, balance. So I don't think uh, we will have the jet age in 2040. There will still be... Uh, folks like us that uh, want to slow things down, that, that'll be on the uh, demand side. On the supply side, I think, uh, uh, depending on what the neighboring cities and the rest of the nation does, Coppel may not have a choice. We, we will have to uh, keep in pace with the um, with other cities. And so we will be moving at pretty much the pace of the rest of the metro in, in, in the U.S. So. What I'm trying to say is there will be some change, but I don't think it will be too radical um, in terms of, I don't think flying cars are going to happen. I don't think uh, every city service uh, is, is going to be automated. There will be maybe steps in that direction is what I'm thinking. So uh, I'm, I'm being more conservative on what things will change. Sorry. No, no, I, I think that's a really good discussion point. Um, being a problem solver, being an operationalized, having an operationalized thought process into a plan of steps, right? And I'm thinking through like our role in this board of, you know, how do we take this fascinating, awesome, impacting every one of us in different ways? Kaylin, and you've done a really good job yeah. uh, with, with Aaron and Howard came together. You've presented something really, really well to help us start the framework, mm -hmm. which is great. I'm just thinking of the work that we have to do and like what additional do we need to go request to get, you know, to come back and have more discussions so that what are our recommendations? I mean, I love the way that you said, here's three things that just feel immediately that I need to say out loud. <laughs> you know, I think that helps us. Um, I'm just really thinking about the work that we're going to be doing next step in order to get to a portfolio recommendation is where I'm at. Again, again Caitlin, great job uh, with the presentation. It really got us thinking uh, along those lines. Uh, to, to your point, uh, Todd, I would say uh, maybe we should next time go around and say what was the top three things that you see um, is, is going to be the, the um, trend or the talking point. And then once we have the document, we have to go a little bit deeper into that. And then as a team decide which of those 15 or 15 points we're going to summarize in two or three bullets. So that's one way to do it. Uh, but again, she's uh, given us such a wonderful starting point. Um, maybe there's not much that she's not already told us. There's so much. Um, yeah, I was, I'm, I, and I have a few more. I'll send you my, like, more raw notes because I didn't include everything. Um, I think no, I don't. I don't think you're going to have like trouble finding um, more things. I think the yeah, like what do you do next? It's, like how specific do you want to be in terms of giving the guidance to the city? You know, I think all those bullets in the original document they had really good ideas there. I just didn't see how to accomplish those things, like thinking about developing like the customer interface, doing all the the um, the automation and, and the analytics necessary to some of the things the city's going to have to do. It seems to me like um, staff may be the long term solution, especially by 2040. Um, but the sooner you get started, the more prepared to be like fixing some data. So. It's exciting. I mean, I think, I think you're right. Cocktail's probably on the leading edge already. Um, but I didn't. I didn't really read anything that we, that we haven't already talked about. Like there wasn't anything super shocking that hasn't come up in one of our other pillars that I saw. So outside of the idea of the robot. Mm -hmm. 
and I put the articles in there, you can read them, but some, you know, they just talk about how quickly they think that market will take off. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pretty surprised by it. Uh, I think next time when we meet, uh, we should think about robots as not just a physical thing, but and and software program that that is running yeah. running. It. Yeah. 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 So you're right. Yeah, it's not, and that's they're not robots. Like, um, it's a digital worker. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, I was going to say, though, the, the physical robot that UTD has, I don't know what all data they're capturing. Do you know, Patrick? Because I see them all the time now. It seems to me there's more of them. There are more of them. Yeah. Um, the highly responsive to humans to the point where students now play games with them when they come to deliver food, and the students will jump back and forth in front of them. <laughs> and you can see where they've learned one path through a crowd. And the next batch tries to follow that path, and somebody's decided to stand in the middle of the path and refuses to move for the robot. So then watch the robots have to like relearn where to go. Um, I'm sure that data is all getting captured. You know, I know it gets captured for the rerouting. I mean, those robots are crossing streets. Right. I mean, they're crossing the equivalent of Ben Tap Road every day to deliver food and do other stuff on campus. Um, I, I, but, but it raises the issue that I keep having, and I keep needing to ask our director of facilities and economic development this, which is, if I hit the robot, who's liable? Right. It's a food delivery robot, but, you know, it gets to the same point about you know, safety and the rest of it. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. 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 there is the data ownership issue that comes with that. I'm just curious. I mean, because I'm curious as, you know, because they think we could easily have one of those in our parks, um, you know, cruising the, cruising the parks, you know, what all of us doing and, you know, what all of them want to do. And I think those are, those are some of the, the use cases and questions that I have around some of these things, but there, there are robots out there that we could deploy today to do what, though, right? Mm-hmm. And so those are the big questions from, from a service delivery perspective that I, I look at from the city's perspective. Um, what are the expectations of your point of the, of the resident? You know, you know, what are they looking for yeah. from a from yeah. a robot? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me put you on the spot, yeah. Mr. City employee. Okay. Um, and, and and I'm just trying to frame what would be some good next steps for the board. Um, what would good next steps be? So, for example, I went back to the actual portfolio, mm-hmm. you know, and that because uh, I tried to think in buckets, um, you know, and so the portfolio was, you know, robotic workforce. Mm-hmm. This doesn't have to be a uh, humanoid, but robotic workforce and automated city services. Maybe that's the same thing in certain cases. Maybe it's different. I'm not sure, but I mean, that's the portfolio. Um, we got. Great guide rails, you know, or guidelines for us to think through. What would you, would you have thoughts of what, how the board can best help you, help the city, uh, kind of give us some direction? You're thinking, like, could you go do some more around this? Or we're already kind of thinking that way, so don't waste the time there. You may not have those thoughts. I'm just wondering if you do. I don't have a direct answer right off. And I can tell you that. We are today across the board and all the departments looking at the, the robotics that we're looking at are more in line with the software than true physical robots. Um, it is about automation, leveraging bots to do um, data entry. Um, and then I'm hoping to leverage it for more of the AI around what it can pull from. We do have a lot of data sets. How do we extract the data and what can we do with it? And that's the automated piece that I'm looking for. Um, I did have a data scientist on staff. Um, she used to finish her doctorate. She was still here. She's getting ready for 2040. I know. I had, we, had, we had plans for her. Um, Caitlin was going to bring a job description, but she was looking to 2040, not yeah. the next month. <laughs> yeah, I'll have that for you in time. But I, I have seen a trend specifically in the in the in the cities that surround us and, and, and in North Texas in general, there are more of the IT analysts, data analysts that are popping up and that their focus is on the data. Um, their background is, is data science and they're trying to 
So um, I've talked about this before. There is no perfect example of an algorithm that exists that it captures any one specific kind of, you know, you have these inputs and then, then you get an answer of X and now the city is X. Um, that doesn't exist. So I think I think we were, where we're at as a profession today is we all realize that data is important. Um, we know that we have data sets. Uh, it's trying to, it really is figuring out what to do with it and what, what we can extrapolate from the data sets that we have. Um, and I think there's little pockets of things that start, will start small and will grow to something larger. Water consumption, utility consumption, um, those, are, those are metrics that we can track across time and, and we can bring it back to weather conditions. And that's important to, to kind of forecast. Um, but there's still other things to leverage it for. I mean, I, to me, I think there's just going to be this whole new trend of looking at it differently. Um, you know, it, it specifically as we start to become more dense, densely populated, water becomes more of a concern, we'll start to be focusing on, you know, making sure that we can continue to provide that service. At, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, or fundamentally the city provides municipal services, which are good. a lot of the stuff that we talk about here at Coppell is way beyond uh, what your traditional base city would provide. So uh, for, for, for next meeting, um, and, and taking the cue from one of the slides that Caitlin had, so within the pillar of uh, robotic services and then city automation services, is, I'm thinking of sub-pillars under it, underneath it. One is uh, uh, definitely as, as a result of all, all of this, there's a cost avoidance for the city. Uh, another sub-pillar would be um, citizen satisfaction. I mean, the whole point of us doing anything is satisfaction, right? And then a very key thing uh, would be the data security and legal aspects of it. Like yeah. the question that Patrick said, you know, if we do have a physical robot running around and someone hits, um, city has to, yeah. and maybe we'll just copy what New York does, but something for city to think about. It. So uh, I thought of that as a circular. So we can take the points from uh, Caitlin and then think of this uh, sub pillars and see if we need to come up with a recommendation for those. Yeah, I, I I agree. This is this, this is a difficult one um, to just you know, a recommendation at. I mean, I think you you've done a great job of identifying three things that are important and adding staff for me is always always <laughs> later. Yeah, because um, I feel like we definitely uh, to your point. Over the next 10 years, the amount of um, money that we are going to allocate for systems and solutions uh, is just going to continue to grow. So the percentage of the budget will actually increase in these areas, and we will have to start to support it. And I, but I do think there is that transition of the the digital worker transitions some of the salary dollars to savings from those automations. Yeah. And so you, if the work is changing and evolving, um, and we in the city have to continue to do that too. And, that, and, and again, and I, I, don't know if I, I was at a director's retreat with all the directors, and uh, we were identifying our top two to three goals for, for our departments across the city. Um, I went first, and I identified some projects that I was working on from an IT perspective, more traditional IT stuff. Um, but did have some emphasis in data. We went around the room, and by the time we got to the other end uh, of all these folks, my project list grew to like <laughs> everybody was Everything, focused yeah. on their data and doing something with their data. The infiltration of yeah. data. <laughs> so, <laughs> the integration. So, and it's, and it's, and it's because we, we have a culture of, of innovation in, in mm -hmm the city and the directors are doing a good job of trying to leverage the fact that, hey, we, do our, we are capturing data. We do need to start to make some decisions around that data. How do we, from a parks perspective, the programming, they're trying to understand what programming provides the biggest bang for the buck as well as the biggest uh, feel good ad, right? What are those events that um, they had a very successful event over the weekend with the tree lighting and the parade. And, um, 
hard to hard to identify uh, even with a, a we could we could roughly estimate what we think of the attendance was, but it's we're not accurately we're not selling tickets, so we can't just say that these are the number of tickets we sold and people were here, uh, and we can't really quantify um, the feel that came with that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so those are the things that I think will start to start to change over time as we start to figure out how we can maybe manipulate the data to get some of that um, besides your standard survey that no one wants to fill out. From that address of every guy coming in, yeah. it was so if there, was there so that up, so that, somebody knows who is there. <laughs> so, and that's and that is, to your point, yeah. So that that goes into business relationships with the cellular providers to identify who all was in that area uh, or what numbers were connected in that area. I, if you if you're connected to any Wi-Fi um, in any facility, I'm capturing MAC addresses and identify. Is that what you do? Have a management free city Wi-Fi. Uh, and we do in part, uh, but not uh, not for all residents. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to think about from the board's perspective. Hold on, let me correct that. It's yeah, available but, to all residents uh, in the park, <laughs> but we don't provide it to, to the house. I'd be recording. We'll make sure I didn't. Know. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. And I'm just trying to go back, think about from our scope, you know, and our and how we can be best useful to the city and our role. Um, so we, we laid the bill around in robotic workforce and automated city services. So, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, should we, <clears throat> you know, try to say, let's focus on what would be the right things to bring to the city on that robotic workforce? And it could be as simple as we need to understand what the resource allocation We've done some research around how resource allocation has changed over the last five years, 10 years. Any, you know, city through Jared or whatever is going to need to understand how that allocation is going to continue to change from the standpoint. I'm making this up. Um, and then from an I'm, I'm just trying to say that because we could go down so many rabbit holes here. You know? So, so, yeah, so look, I'm following your thought process, but I, I think the board, we need to remember your advising council. Um, and one of the things that I think would be helpful for them would be to break out that definition of robotics, the work, workforce robotics from a digital worker, like the bots, like we're talking about from a software perspective versus the true physical robot. Um, because one is here sooner than the other, I think. Um, so I think that would be a good kind of here, when we evaluated this from the research, here are the two kind of categories of robotic followers. The, the digital worker, which is more software-based, that, that exists today, and then you have uh, more of the, the physical robots that will be physically providing services um, in the future. And then you kind of make a recommendation around those two kind of categories. Um, that's what I'm thinking when I kind of go thinking back through our discussion tonight. That's kind of where I think those two will, because it's definitely different, right? Yep, there's, yep. And there's the implications of the physical one and then the, with the infrastructure and all the other things, that's kind of an area of focus. Um, the city services related to the automation and the robotics related to bots and AI, it's kind of its own kind of bucket as well. Yeah, that's really good um, guidance. Um, guidance. Yeah. I think that will help kind of drive a recognition for those kind of two areas. And take the next. Oh, if we if we if we think about that, and again, Aaron Moshel, please just chime in whenever you need to. Just interrupt us. Um, one of, the, one of the things that's realistic, and it goes into another agenda item, and we need to start thinking about moving towards that just time-wise. Um, you know, we, we are at this public call. We're at, we're at a fork in the road right now. I mean, <clears throat> with new board coming, no board members coming on, and how do we transition this beginning work on this portfolio you know, into new board members coming on? So. Let me say this out loud, and you guys agree with me or disagree with me, but I. I mean, first of all, I think you really put us on a 
great position. I, I honestly feel like after one presentation, based on all of our experience from past and iterations that we've done already, um, I just feel like as a board, we're in a better place to kind of figure out, okay, how do we move towards recommendations? So I think you've really, you've done a really great job of taking those learning to present to us tonight. Um, I think we're in a really good spot that when it's time, of the January, February, whatever that's going to be, you know, we pick that back up, put this framework out there as you're suggesting, and then begin those conversations again. Because yeah, we have some onboarding that we'll, you know, need to think through. But I think that's possibly the next step. How do we move this forward? Because we'll have certain numbers not here. Right. But, uh, to me, this is definitely a continuation, right? Uh, oh yeah. You know, this, this one, this this one feels like this one be a couple meetings of, of discussion before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we'll have we bring that discussion to the next. To the yeah. 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 I think I think it's just, uh, fair for uh, the. The new board to have this same kind of discussion, albeit at the you know condensed fashion. At least to have this discussion, I don't think we should just give this to them and say, "Hey, I'll move on to the next test." So, so how about this as a recommendation so we can move to our next? Um, well, let me say this as a statement and see if we're in a good place that we can move to the next step. So, one of the thoughts I'm thinking about is let's take the notes we have from today. And that one then will basically have a pickup session on portfolio for, you know, at the appropriate time with all new, with the new board and that, right. um, as a starting point. <clears throat> you know, we're not in any place to make a recommendation or um, I think we're just in a place, we're in a really good place to kind of guide with those next discussions. So um, I think we pause where we're at. We're at a good point. We take your notes, we get your actual information and share um, for that next discussion. Does that sound right to everybody? Okay. Um, so I'd like to move to the next agenda item. And we have we have three agenda items left. Um, one is discuss onboarding new board members and, and tasks in the first meeting. Um, I've got some questions that I think we can frame that discussion up. Uh, the next bullet point is discuss agenda items for the next meeting, which I have some actual questions around just formalities of having a new board and a meeting date. So our next bullet point is I'd like the board to be thinking and discussing, you know, onboarding new members. Um, and again, that role of actually doing that resides with you and the staff, I'll just say staff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we are in a really good point to like capture some thoughts of and if I could go back and do the old, because I wish I would have known, blah, 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 blah. So we just maybe have a little bit of list, slight discussion. You know, you're newer than some of the rest of us. And, um, so maybe the way to direct some of that conversation for the next maybe 10 minutes is I'll just throw a couple of little points out there to frame the discussion. You know, what do you wish that you had? when you started, or for Ramesh, and I also have been here longer, looking back with history, and I wish I would have known this or had that to move things forward. Um, and, you know, if you were going to give advice to a brand new board member coming on, what would be those two or three things that you might share with him or her that we want to make sure that, you know, we can do a better on board or, or do onboarding in a different way? So I'll just throw that out there for, um, they never like to pick that up. Um, I'll just take a list of kind of what we think. So, can I have any thoughts? For, for me, I would say uh, a quick, like a memory card with, with three bullet points on what was the purpose of uh, this, this um, uh, board. Uh, because it took me six months to finally get into my <laughs> big hide. The purpose is this and not that. So, I kept thinking tactical and then, uh, so. Uh, having uh, like like a cheat sheet uh, that that you read at least two minutes before the monthly meeting that you come, uh, so you don't waste first half hour of the meeting thinking tactical and then changing mind changing the mindset. So that would be my takeaway. So answering the question in a simple sim simplistic way from all of our learnings, mm -hmm. why are we here and what are we supposed to do? And important, what are you not supposed to do? Yeah. So. And uh, but just what I struggle with this too. Mm -hmm. The whole like six months probably at least. Yeah. Um, 
at least what I think helps me, but if I'm wrong, you don't even have to tell me because I won't be here, so just <laughs> ignore me. But what I finally got was we're supposed to be thinking about what the city can do today to prepare for 2040. So it is like, what should they be doing now? But it's all in preparation for 2040. So it's like, and it's, it's, I just had to, okay, it's like, no. What can they do now to prepare for 2040? And it's so hard with this topic in particular. And that and uh, our job is to not recommend a solution, uh, but state um, a vision of what is, what is going to happen. And then it's the uh, staff's job to decide how to do it. Um, again, for six months, not just me, uh, most of us were getting tactical. We had meetings that were just based on whiteboard discussions, the frame up, how do we do this work? I mean, you know, but that was the journey we were on, but you're exactly right. Um, I'll get really tactical. So a couple of things, I mean, when I started, even though we were brand new, would have been great to just have a real easy way to understand what the SharePoint thing is, how I can get to it anytime I want to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, almost like let's just get that thing set up on first meeting. So, you know, um, so just basically where's all this stuff reside and what is in that folder? Yeah. I think that would be really, really helpful. Um, <clears throat> um, obviously the, and we reiterate it, but hey, don't reply all. Like, how do those rules work and make that simplistic? But that's naturally built into it. But again, we didn't have to talk about that because it was new to so many other people. Yeah. So just make that easy. Um, I think a, I, I think also for a reset with new board members, similar to kind of like what we did when I made the presentation to city council is what came before. Mm -hmm when you sat here, like, how did we get here? And there's like a quick history, you know, for context. And we tried to do that. I don't know if we were very successful with the new members, like with you guys coming on, but I, I, I think we can do a better job of like, why we exist, how we got here, why does this even, you know, crazy house looking model, mm -hmm. like, why does that, why do we keep going to it? Um, I think it would be helpful. Yeah, I agree. Um, one of the things I wrote down from the beginning of the meeting that I think, and, and I told you this before talk, but I think it would be a gift to the new members to have a goal, like the next, at the next meeting for council, like whatever, set the next pillar or set a date where they're going to pick the next pillar, but just get, as they're getting up to speed and trying to grasp it all and do the mental shift, give them something explicit to work towards because I feel once we got in our cadence of like, okay, talk about it, do the research, then the next session come back, do some more refining. Like I feel like we got that and so it was really helpful for those conversations where I didn't necessarily feel like we got anywhere. It was fine because we knew where we were going. And I think that would be really nice to know like whatever in a quarter or six months but have something they're driving towards on that very first day yeah we got there through iteration yeah um, and i'm right there with you i mean like you know when we said let's make recommendations by the end of the year so then we can back up from that yeah. and it's like oh, wait we actually kind of do have a cadence but let's put words to the cadence mm -hmm. so we can move it forward um i i, I think that's a great recommendation moving forward um michelle do you have any thoughts Aaron. You're gonna talk, Michelle? No, you go ahead. Oh. Okay. Just reinforcing in the history lesson that uh, the 2040 plan and really making sure that new members understand that and that that piece of information is is part of the building block. And so you know we've we've brought that into our, our pillar discussion, but just, just understanding there's that third party document that uh, was created before the board that we're to reference back towards as we go forward. Very good point. Any 
other comments on this point before we move forward? Okay. Really appreciate that. Um, I think Raman covered mostly everything. So I think I'm good with Ramesh's comment. Okay, I'm sorry, Michelle, did you say basically you're good with everything we said? Ramesh covered pretty much everything that uh, that was on my list here. I was reviewing the main list, but uh, he covered everything, so. Okay, all right, good, thank you. Thank you for uh, stopping me. Um, are we ready to move to the next one? We all good with that? The one thing I was going to say from the administrative task to have to occur for that meeting, we will be time to pick another, if we want to, chair, vice chair. Uh, so that will be part of the, the things that will have to happen when that first meeting comes on. Um, there will be some of that initial um, meeting, the rules that we follow, kind of that high level stuff that will go along the very first meeting we had, um, that'll be basically kind of a review of that. Um, but I think it is helpful for you guys to have some helpful guidelines. And I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that that is coming. So um, that'll basically be the main part of the agenda for the next meeting. Exactly. The most, that's going to be most of the meeting. It's going yeah. to be going through these things, voting on um, a new chair, and vice a new chair. chair, and vice chair. Uh, and then I think you get uh, the definition of why you exist, and, and that'll be probably the meeting. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, that'll be overwhelming. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot to get into on a joining meeting. Well, we do have folks continue on, so I'm happy about that. Um, so I don't know if people, you guys can help with that conversation. So that's the administrative piece of that. So let's let's just kind of talk about timing for that, Jared. I mean, so there is a there's a swearing in, which is not the meeting, no. but that is a that is a policy procedure that everyone goes through. Um, yeah, and so that that's one. And then there's a, do we have the actual meeting in January? Do we have a date? I don't know. Uh, we don't. I mean, we we all, we've been on the cadence, but well, so we have the. December. Right. So the reception December 14th, that includes the oath. So hopefully everyone can attend. If those that, you know, do not attend, we will reach out to them and say, hey, we need you to come in. And they can come in on their own time anytime before January. Essentially what that means is if they don't, by the time they have your meeting, they just cannot, they may be able to discuss and say their thoughts, but they will not be able to actually participate as a member, especially if they are newly appointed, like fresh you. If you're returning, there is this kind of like um, transition where they allow you to continue to serve because you've taken your oath previously. And hopefully you've taken your training as well. Yeah, so just, just for everybody, you know, that's moving forward, that is next Tuesday, um, which is that point of notification. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously you guys will handle him and he can't make it and all that. But I do think we still need to decide, is it going to be the 10th following our cadence? Because the third is third's the first Monday, which is right after the new year, and the 10th is that second Monday. Yeah, so technically the third would be the day that we would but if, if you get, I mean, it is close to the years, and I don't know if that impacts anybody's schedule to do it on that third. It would be better. Either one would be. I'm thinking 10th would be better, uh, third being. But after I mean, I don't, I'm okay with the third, but I don't know how other feel. Do we think on it? What are your thoughts? Either one, then better. Um, I don't know. Mine, anecdotally, the third feels like it'd be a little more chaotic. Um, um, that might be a little more "quote unquote" normal, life-wise. Um, so I'd probably, if I had to choose, I'd vote for ten. Is my me, thought. Me too. Yeah, Todd. The because of our somebody's heavy deadline on twelve thirty-one, we're actually recognizing New Year's on the third. And so for the new members, they may be in the same boat. I don't know. It, it's something that happens to us every six years. So um, just 
noting that some people might be recognizing the actual New Year's holiday on that that third. On the third, yeah. That's a very good point. So it sounds like the tenth is going to be the best date. So we all kind of moving forward with that. Okay. And so tenth will be that date. Um, I think that covers all that we needed to discuss for the meeting. Um, unless there's any other thing to discuss around that, we could accept promotion to adjourn. Sure. Okay, I'm going to say the 10th, are we going to, do we need to continue at 7 or 6? Great, great conversation. So Patrick, we'll look to you on that because 7 was your recommendation or ask. About 7 was, my, yeah, because I've got some more things I can't move around. Um, does that continue? At least that does not, I can speak through August right now. It's as far as I can maybe get them. Um, I'm willing to move earlier. Um, that said, you've got two new members you're bringing on board. If they look and they see when we've been meeting, if their decision to be on the board was based on when we were meeting, uh, we'll probably have that same agenda item for that meeting as well, where we can at least discuss the state of the I, And I think it means, yeah, I think we say the next meeting, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We stick with seven like we have been, but then we leave it open. Of, that would be an agenda item for the next meeting. Okay. Just for good. So I'd say let's let's go to uh, January 10th, Monday at 7 p.m. And then on the agenda item, we'll discuss, you know, do we want to start that at 6 30? Yep. Um, I think it's good. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Anyone? Uh, Based the motion to adjourn. Is that how that okay. yes. All right. So. Uh, I think we're all, I don't even know if we have time to approve all that, but I think we're finished. So um, we will conclude the meeting for today at eight. Okay, sorry, I can do it. So we have a second from Patrick. So I guess we need to vote. Is that what you're suggesting? Right, all at the table. We're all good. But it passes. The meeting adjourned on the 6th at 8.33. I guess.